Welcome back to our new unit where we'll start to talk about algebra in Grade 7 Maths. Alright, there's a puzzle there that you can have a go at. We'll move on. So, pronumerals and variables. It's basically algebra, using letters in the place of numbers in mathematics. So, that's where we are in our overall plan. Let's go on. Alright, so algebra is this... Um, this method of mathematics where we, we communicate ideas that sort of make it easier to do harder and harder problems and make it easier to work with unknown numbers even though we don't know what the number is we can still do calculations on it so algebra is how we write a rule or, or some sort of formula in a simple manner we use a letter or a symbol in place of a number we don't know what that number is and it doesn't matter at the time but we can work it out later uh, when we use some sort of letter or symbol, we generally refer to it as a formula. The letter or symbol that we use, and often the one we use is X, we refer to that as a pronumeral or sometimes a variable. Okay, a pronumeral or a variable. Incidentally, when we write X, it's better to write it the way I did just then. Don't write it like that as you would in normal writing because that can be confused with a multiply sign. Um, if a letter is used in place of a number, the value is not determined by its position in the alphabet. So if we use um, B for a number, it doesn't mean that's a smaller number than X or C or a bigger number or whatever. It's just a different letter. Uh, when multiplying numbers and pronumerals, we do not need to show the multiplication sign. The number is written in front of the uh, pronumeral. So here's our example here, h equals k times 5. We don't need to write the times, and the 5 goes in front of the k. So we just say h equals 5k. And there's no symbol between the 5 and the k, so it's understood that it's a multiply, 5 times k. All right, so we can use x as a, as a pronumeral or a variable for the number of lollies in a packet. So if the number of lollies in a packet can vary, we call it x and it's a variable and that's what this sentence here means all right we're defining what x is going to be that is the number of lollies in a particular packet so using algebra we can use x as our pronumeral to represent the unknown number of lollies in the actual packet so, so obviously it can vary in this case we're calling x number of lollies inside our packet of fantails here i love fantails they're nice all right so if we have three extra lollies like we do down here, all right, this packet represents X number of lollies, and then there's three more. So there's these three here, one, two, three. So what we have is X plus three lollies, which is what we've written here. If we buy another identical packet of lollies, we now have two times X, but we don't need the time sign, so we just say two X. Each one of these is X, so we have two of them, two times x or two x. In our last example down here, we've got two packets. Each one represents x and we've got three more. So my two x's there are two x plus the extra three lollies that we have spare. All right, see how we start turning these examples into these, this algebra, these mathematical um, statements that we're putting down. Alright, let's have a look at these ones. Uh, when we have a little equation like this, we refer to this as an equation because he's got an equal sign in there. M equals Q times 4 plus 3. Now remember, we don't need to put the time sign in there and we write the 4 in front of the Q. With the 3, well there's nothing really we do with him. So we'd rewrite that as M equals 4Q plus 3. All right, with this next one down the bottom here, we can do this a couple of different ways, but basically, once again, we don't really need the, the time sign. We could rewrite that as B equals five outside of M plus two. And we can work out how to get rid of those brackets later, but that's the easiest way to do it. There's no symbol between the five and the bracket, so it's understood to be five times what's in the brackets. And the same with the next one. Let's have a look at the proper answer. 
4q plus 3 is what we had, 5 outside of m plus 2, that's how we say him. With this last one, we don't need the times in the middle there, and we don't need to write that times. All right. And the 3 goes out the front. 3 outside of w, 2w minus 6. So the minus 6 doesn't change at all. All right. There's some more here that you can have a go at in your own time, but it's essentially it's the same thing. And so on. All right, if we look at one down here, g equals 2, we don't need the times, outside of 3 times r is 3r plus 17, we can't do anything, so we leave it, and close brackets, okay? All right, now we start getting patterns into these, these equations and formula and so on. All right, well, let's have a look at this. We've got an example here, g equals f plus something, all right? So what goes in that something? So f are these numbers here, and g is this bottom row. So if f is 3, we're, to get to 5, we're plussing on 2. If f is 6, plus 2 is 8. 8 plus 2. You can see the pattern now. It's all plus 2. So g equals f plus 2. And that's how we worked out what the pattern was. And that's what this will give you here, the same working out. You can have a look at this sort of one here. If f is 0, 9 is what g is. Okay, so we think, well, we added on 9 to do that. Well, let's look at the next one. 1 plus 9, hey, that works. 3 plus 9, hey, we're looking good. And so on. So it must be g equals f plus 9. See how we worked through the table to work out what the solution was, what, what the actual equation ended up being. All right, some slightly different examples of how we get a, 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 an equation or a statement. So let's have a look. Simon has x fish. The number of fish he has is x. This is like our fantail example back at the start. He buys 10 more. How many fish does he have? He started with x, and then we're adding on 10 more because he's buying 10 more. And we have this statement here. The number of fish equals x plus 10. And that becomes my equation, my formula, my little mathematical statement to describe the number of fish he's got. All right, there are R cards in one pack. So we start with R. How many cards are in three identical packs? Well, I want to multiply that by three. If I had that number of cards to start with, I've got three of them. All right, we don't write r times 3, we write 3r. C. Sophia, oh, sorry, Sonia has n dollars in her bank account. She withdraws 100. So she started with n and she took away 100 from her bank balance. What is now in her bank balance? It was n subtract 100, n minus 100. And the dollars on there makes it just a little bit more complete. Uh, D. There are D biscuits in a packet. Half of them are eaten. So how do we halve D to see how many is left? D divided by 2 or D over 2, same thing. Um, a kitchen cupboard contains X plates and W bowls. What's the total number of plates and bowls? Well, we'd add them together. X plates plus W bowls. There's the number of plates and bowls. Number of plates and bowls equals X plus W. Another example, write each of the following using algebra. So the product of E, F, and 7. Product in maths means times. You may recall that um, product is times, and quotient is divide. All right, so we're going to product of E, F, and 7. We're multiplying E, F, and 7 together. You could write that as E times F times 7, but that's not really how we do it. We do it like that down there, 7 E, F. And note the E and the F are just in alphabetical order to make it slightly more complete. It's a bit like you put a capital at the start of your sentence or something. That's how you write a sentence. When we do mathematics, 
we just put the variables or the pronumerals in alphabetical order. It doesn't mean that one's worth more than the other, it's just how we write it. 7EF. All right, B. C is divided by 4, then 1 is subtracted. Now when you're doing these questions, start with your unknown. So C. So we're starting with C. The next thing it says is it's divided by 4. So I'm going to divide it by 4. C over 4 is the same as C divided by 4. Then 1 is subtracted. So then I'm going to minus 1. C over 4, minus 1, which is what we've got there. Let's have a look at C, part C. The sum of x and 5 is multiplied by 3. Sum means plus. Remember, sum means plus. Difference means minus, as opposed to quotient and divide over here. Product and quotient. So the sum of x and 5. Let's start with that. So the sum of x and 5 is x plus 5. And then it says it's multiplied by 3. So all of that is multiplied by 3. But we don't write it like that. We put the 3 in front. And we say 3 outside of x plus 5. A couple examples. Have a go at these before you listen to the, uh, the solutions. Write the following situation using algebra. There are V chocolates in a box. How many chocolates are there in 12 boxes? We have 12 lots of V. We write that as 12V, which means 12 times V. Part 2. The, product, the following using algebra. Product of 4 and Y. 4Y. Product means times. D is multiplied by 10. Then 8 is added. Notice how I read that out and wrote bits down and worked it out sequentially like that. All right, three less than five lots of E. Let's start with our variable and work from there. Five lots of E is five E. And we want three less than that. Okay, so you would subtract three from that. Uh, and T is subtracted from five. So it's like we had 5 and we subtracted t. Uh, in the last one, draw a diagram to represent that. 3x plus 5. We could say, let x be packets of lollies, of fantail lollies. So therefore, 3x plus 5 is represented by one packet, two packets, three packets, and then five more. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. All right. Have a go at some of your questions. And don't forget, check your answers. Ask your teacher if you've got any problems. Thanks a lot.